guys, we're heading to an ice machine call. Not sure what's going on there. It's been a couple years since I've been there. But we're going to take a look at it and see what's going on. If you guys end up enjoying the video, if you would, please give it a like and a share, subscribe, and all that. All right, well, here it is. No ice. Yep, there's no ice. Let's see what we got going on in here. We got a lot of heat going on. Well, this is kind of disgusting. Plate is not frozen. It is cold. It's not frozen. Let's see if we can get some of this out of the way so we can actually get into it. I think that's my writing from 18. I don't usually use a black marker, so that's probably not mine. This thing's old. There's a reason why they say it's not for consumption or whatever on the, on the thing there. It's uh, they're just packing it around, you know, ice packs and things like that, but still. I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit. That's gonna affect the way it works. You can see how the water's not making it all the way across. One time there was a scale stick in there, and that's my writing from 18. That's not been replaced. Water pressure looks like it's about nothing. So what we've got here is we've got a water pressure issue. Air filter is dirty. It's just got issues with maintenance. Water filters, air filter, because I mean, as warm as that feels, it feels like it's um, refrigerant's okay, which that plate has nothing on it. Well, you ain't got no water coming out, it's not gonna do much. Now, one thing you can do with these if you're in a pickle and you don't have one to replace it with, you can pop that top o ring and it'll bypass until you get a new one. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in there. We also got a new scale stick too. That one there is before the filter. Let's see if we can shut that one off. That's pretty tight. Don't recommend doing this, but I need a whole lot of options. Skill stick completely gone. Go figure. It's been since 18. At least they got a sink here. See the new one? It's uh, Ever Pure also. It's got that white stuff in there. Supposedly safe for drinking. But it helps get rid of the some of the nasty scale stuff that's in this crappy water. All these wells around here, or I should say all the water around here, is from wells. It's not reservoirs. Just depends on where I'm at. I mean, right now I'm in a small town. Just really depends on where I'm at. See, what I anticipate is there's a lot of people that watch me that are all city people that uh, have no clue what country water is or anything else, and it's always kind of funny to me. So I feel as though I need to explain it. Because you never know who the heck's even watching. Don't know what country's watching, don't know who's watching. So you feel as though you need to kind of say these things, that way people know why you're doing what you're doing and the way this works is there's a rubber seal at the top that just kind of holds it in place and the water kind of passes through it and don't know exactly everything about it but essentially that's how it works now it will leave a rubber thing in there that sometimes you need to pull off because that's leftover rubber thing sometimes i'll put plumber's grease on it that makes it easier to spin back together there's also a prong thing down here in the bottom that will match up to help hold it in place. Go ahead and bleed this filter out. That's something I didn't know when I first started. You've got to prime these. So we put a little hose on that, take it up there to the vent, and then uh, you just prime the filter. You're supposed to run about five gallons through it. Probably not a humongous deal if you don't. Won't kill nobody. Just get some carbon and stuff in the water, some black flakes and stuff. So it's best if you do it the way it's supposed to be done. You won't have so many problems. It's looking a little peculiar. It's nice when you have a nice sink, soap available, stuff like that. You're not going to find any soap and stuff like that around here. So you got to carry some of this stuff on your truck, and that's why I've got my own little buckets, scrub brushes, all that stuff. These are brittle, scare me to death. Snap the little prongs off on these things. They're not in good shape at all. 
there we go. You're not gonna get all this hard water stuff off. Yeah, it's hard water. Calcium buildup from hell. I mean, you can see the metal and stuff. It's all rusted out and stuff. This is not going for no award for the most cleanly thing in the world. We've got a little screw there on top. That is scrumptious. Mmm. Wholesome goodness. That's where your brush comes in handy. Look at that. So mainly it's just slime. We never killed anybody right away. And you still got to take this apart and get the insides of it. Now we'll run the cleaner through this and so get the inside and stuff as far as the calcium build up. I like cleaning the gunk off of it first. You can see here that it twists and then you can pull this thing apart. Just got some little ring seals in there. See how that comes out. Same thing here, it just turns and pops out. And that's got a lot of nasty crud in the middle. Best off to run a brush through the center of it. Calcium, actually. Look at all that calcium. It's just nasty. Got it. There we go. It's still locked in. It's still locked in. And what you got there is just stains. We'll uh, soak that. That needs a good soaking, which you can see it's just, yeah. If all I did was ice machines, I had the option of stocking my truck the way I wanted it stocked, we would have this on the truck. This is your water level sensor. It actually just maintains a certain level of water, hence water level sensor. Somebody's cleaned it up with a scouring pad a few times. And that's because you're not using a chemical cleaner on it. I always just round it to the nearest half bottle. And that gives me enough to let the sensor soak. Once they're done soaking, I will then scrub a dub the beast with the leftover water at that point. Look at that. See how it's bubbling? Because it's attacking it. That's why if I was to scrub that with a scrub brush and stuff, it wouldn't come off. But it just absolutely attacks that calcium. See how it's almost already completely dissolved everything on there? Pretty beautiful. Now the other one, not quite as quickly. It is getting it pretty good. Problem is, everybody wants to wait. And if you just keep it on a routine schedule, it won't be a dire emergency. Probably one of the most useful devices is a sprayer. Keep this for your dedicated cleaning for, you know, clean water. You can get into all these tight spots and knock all that nasty loose crap out and get behind there and break everything loose and sanitize when you're done with the sprayer. Now when I get finished here, I'm going to just use my wet vac to sweep the crud out because you're not going to get that out no matter how much you run that pump. But I was able to break all this crud loose. And then the big thing is, don't ever forget, underneath here, I already scrubbed it with a brush, but now I'm rinsing it because all kinds of mold and nastiness gets all up underneath here. And I broke it loose. Now we're just spraying it all down and it's the easiest way. I mean, if you want to get done with this, if you hate doing it like I do, and you want to get it done quickly, then this sprayer makes it so much simpler. 
but you can't obviously use it for chemicals and then use it for an uh, ice machine next. So you've got to have one dedicated. So I've got literally two of these, one for uh, chemicals and then another one for ice machines and stuff like this. And uh, they're only 15 bucks maybe. It's only a gallon, so it's not huge, but it makes your job easy. And I go with a wide pattern for this. And also, as you've seen, I use it for melting water. Uh, the reason, or the how I ended up doing this, I just heated it up with heat gun or torch and just kept bending it and then held it and put it in cold water and got that curb. And you'd be surprised the stuff that hides in the little crevices. And it also helps you get it washed down the drain. And that's correct, it is washed. You know, in the vacuum, you probably get that really good too. You got grass in there because these kids are using this for their ice packs and stuff like that. Anybody else have this problem with the uh, little hinge thing getting broken there? Luckily, it's just the piece that mounts on the side with two screws, which could be replaced. Now, for those that are like, oh my god, you're using a sweeper in an ice machine. Let's think about this. We still have to sanitize the machine. And there's a lot of the crud that we pulled out. Look at all those chunks of rock. Ain't that wonderful? We got everything cleaned out. And if this thing's still plugged in, there is sometimes voltage available to shock you there. So you gotta be careful of that. You should always have your power off just in case you get water into things. Get this back in. I think that screws more than long enough. You can screw the neighbor's water sensor back on too. Yeah, that's kind of been screwed with. As you can tell the knobs all quaint. We actually got it back in there and it's square and I didn't have to strip it out to do it. And like I said, you want to make sure it's perfectly clean in there. You can blow it out with nitrogen or Milwaukee blower. That works pretty good. It takes a little while for it. It's not quite as fast as the nitrogen. Get this back in here and then we'll run the cleaner. This here, there is a screw that's busted off on the inside here and the actual plastic piece that's molded around the female. And what they ended up doing was ran a screw in there. It'll rust. But like I said, this machine's pretty much about garbage. As it is, as you can see, it's really decent looking now. I mean, I wouldn't really care to eat out of it, but they're not using it to eat out of. They're just using it for, like I said, uh, for the sports stuff. So, got that back in there. Yeah, I don't like that. See how that kind of flops and doesn't stay real close to it. Some of that is to do with the curtain there at the top, but we'll go ahead and put it in clean. That looks a lot better, don't it? Sure it does. It's got good, strong water flow now. You see the water's a little hazy. It's probably a little bit left over from the uh, water filter. Factory says use three ounces. I go ahead and use a six. I believe that they're trying to assume that you're going to clean this thing on a routine basis like you're supposed to, but generally by the time it gets cleaned, there's such a buildup that it's just not strong enough. We should hopefully be ready to start doing some stuff here for a long. You see that's cracked. Yeah, this machine's just in poor condition. Water there, going down the trail, very nice. That's what we're looking for. And as I mentioned, this thing does love to go into harvest. See. The harvest light right there, it's on, and obviously we're not touching the metal if the harvest light is on. Tap it, it goes away, it's still not completely dry, so otherwise this stupid thing will go right into harvest again. But if we can get the water completely knocked out, which it's not staying on now, but it'll play games with you and you can waste a lot of time if you're not paying attention to that. So you put it all back together and you're not watching. See, look, right back at it again. A little pain in the butt. So I cheated, grabbed my little hand torch, and it no longer is staying on. Basically, just there's some small molecules of water 
but it's still stuck on there. Our plate is heating pretty good, even if the things are kind of, you know, we're losing some water because the plate's off, so that can screw you. So you need just about every bit of what water you got. And uh, those little fingers, hold that on there, they're about wore out. I found it quicker just to add some water to it. Our water sensor is now back on. We're still feeding good. We're gonna go ahead and get this cover on. As soon as this thing makes ice, I'm getting the heck out of here because this is just the usual thing. It's usually water related most of the time or at the very least, it's refrigerated. Usually it's water. Most of the time it's a water related issue. And it's just lack of maintenance is the problem. If you don't want to do team maintenance, or if you don't want to pay to do that, clean your air filters, change your water filters, add a conditioning system to it that's recommended for an ice machine, and then you won't have to worry about it. Clean it on the regular intervals, which is at a minimum every six months. I recommend every three. If it's important to you, clean it every three months. Less problems that way. It started crackling and stuff like it's doing right now, which it just went into harvest. As you can see the red lights on. That's not a good thing. I prefer it doesn't crack like that. I went ahead and adjusted it. I What my trick is to do, a lot of times even if I don't know where things are at on it, I will uh, turn it a little bit. I'll pull it away, turn it a little bit, drop it towards it, see if it comes on. Pull it away, kind of wait till that first crack and then I'll adjust it till it finally starts to hit and then I'll leave it there and then start over. You can go with the default, which the default on these is right on the inside of this thing. Some of them, they actually got it really well laid out. Some of them don't. I should have started my stopwatch, which I could play back the um, time on the camera. But we'll watch this thing. It should harvest here. And I can feel that it's, it's a couple, about an inch away, three quarters of an inch away from the plate. It should drop here in a second, just like that. Look at that. See, the bridge thickness is a little bit thicker than what it should be there, but you have nice little cubes. Uh, we'll have to watch it one more time just to make sure we're there. But what happens is people don't have ice, and the first thing they do is they want to crank that sensor in to get it thicker. Well, what you've done is if you're unnecessarily making it thicker than you need to, it's going to run longer, which means you're going to get less production because it's going to take longer to harvest. Yes, you'll have more weight, but you're also damaging your evaporator at the same time. You can follow the manufacturer's instructions, which generally I try to stay in line with all those, but that's what we had here. So we had a plugged water filter, a missing scale stick because it's wore out, a plugged dirty filter, air filter. She was just plain filthy. And uh, you know, we swept it out. You seen what we did. We basically went through it, made everything run the way it should. They know they need a new machine. I sent the information to our sales guy. He's gonna get them a price on this machine and one bigger because they said this doesn't uh, satisfy their needs because they actually go through a bunch of it really quick. I guess the kids actually use this for ice baths and it just eats up a lot of ice. But that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, like I said, thumb up is appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe. Instagram and Facebook, we're there. Till next time, we will catch you on the next one. Later.